Hi everybody, this is God's Girl G and thank you so much for joining me today. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. And for those of you returning to this channel to watch this video and you're not already subscribed, I'm going to encourage you to do so by clicking the subscribe icon below. And if during the course of this video you hear something that you like, click the thumbs up, comment below, or better yet, share this video with someone who you feel could benefit from the information. With that stated, let's get into today's discussion. When I was growing up, I heard someone say that you should live your life so at the end of it, you won't have any regrets. But now that I'm older, I find myself saying, is living life without regrets an oxymoron? I mean, is it even possible? All of us have done things for which we wish we could do over. It may be an action that hurt us or someone else. A bad financial decision, a bad relationship. Maybe it was some words that we wish we could take back. All too often, our lives are held captive by the actions and experiences that we regret. Often the failures of yesterday become the regrets of today. In today's video, I'm going to discuss regrets and how to overcome them. But before I get too far ahead of myself, let's define what I mean when I say regret. According to most dictionaries, a regret is a sorrow or remorse over something you have said or done. Regret can also be a disappointment over what has not happened or something that you didn't say or do. Everyone knows about the feelings of regret because it's a universal experience. Regret is always a negative reaction to an undesirable situation. And the intensity of someone's regret will vary. Have you ever noticed how two people given the same opportunities can end up with radically different outcomes. One might receive great success, while another might fall off the path and their life ends in shambles. This even happened in the lives of two disciples, Peter and Judas. Have you ever considered the fact that both Peter and Judas were friends of Jesus? Jesus called them both to be among his 12 disciples. They both spent time with Jesus. They both learned from Jesus. Jesus loved them both. However, in time, they both went down two different regret paths the night of Jesus' betrayal that we can learn from. Peter deeply regretted having made a foolish decision to deny Jesus three times and run away when soldiers came to the garden to arrest Jesus. Now his actions didn't come from the desire to sin, but he made foolish choices. He deeply regretted his actions and wept bitterly. Contrast Peter's story to that of Judas. We are told in Matthew chapter 27 verse three that Judas, much like Peter, regretted his actions. Judas regretted how he betrayed Jesus. His regret led to his death. However, Peter regretted how he treated Jesus and his life was transformed. When we regret a foolish choice or a sin, we can either let it consume our lives like Judas or we can turn from it and be transformed like Peter. Peter had some big regrets when he denied Jesus, even though Peter said he never would. But unlike Judas, Peter's sad story has a happy ending. Jesus later forgave and restored Peter, which proves that no matter what we've done, if we turn to Jesus, he'll forgive and restore us too. Now I wanna share with you three keys for overcoming regrets. First, you must recognize your regrets. Dealing with our regrets starts with recognizing them. You cannot fix what you won't recognize. So whether we've acted wrongly, or failed to act rightly, we have to come clean if we're ever going to overcome. That is why the Bible emphasizes and values confessing our sins to God and to other believers. Two, release your regrets. Once we recognize our sins and regrets, we can release them. 
God asks us to prove that we are truly repentant by turning away from our sin and handing over our regrets. But he also asks for more. We must forgive others and we must forgive ourselves because he has. If he's willing to throw our sins to the bottom of the sea, then we can joyfully grasp that promise and release our regrets. Three, redeem your regrets. Peter is a great example of redeemed regrets. After his colossal failure, he wept and left the courtyard bitterly, feeling worthless and ashamed. He wasn't even there when Jesus was crucified. Yet after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus restored Peter and reminded him that he called him to be an apostle and a disciple maker. Jesus would not allow Peter to wallow in his regrets, but instead he redeemed them. Jesus can redeem our regrets too. Your addictions, your sins, and your failures can all be used by God to form you into the person he wants you to be. But none of that will happen if you don't recognize release and redeem your regrets by giving them over to Jesus. I think one of the most difficult things to deal with in our Christian walk are our own regrets. It's amazing to me that we are more likely to forgive others than forgive ourselves. And we can carry the weight over past actions along with us for years. As we look back on our lives, as we're coming to the conclusion of 2021, my prayer is that we all put aside our shame over our formal regretful actions. God has long since forgiven us, and now we must forgive ourselves and move on. We may not be able to say, no, I regret nothing, but the good news is, that regret can be redeemed, enabling us to enjoy a life beyond regret that has held us back for far too long. Thanks so much for joining me today. And don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Bye.